summer evening here, and here it is here in Calvin, and here we are in Drumalu Community Centre, courtesy of Positive Age in our studios. Now, if you remember, about two months ago, or maybe three months ago, we had a very interesting conversation with a gentleman from Newbridge in County Kildare, and that was Vincent Butler. And Vincent was talking about the release and the work that went into his book, 60 Photographs for Simon. And it's, I'm glad to say it's a great success. And Vincent is back to talk to us again, is talking to us again this evening, all the way from Newbridge in County Kildare. And I shall say at that point, good evening, Vincent. Good evening, Arnie. How are you? Nice to see you again. Great to talk to you again, Vincent. And I am glad to say your book, 60 Photographs for Vincent, for Simon, sorry, for Simon is a great success. So you have raised 78,000 euros through the different ways. Yeah, it's been a fantastic success, I'd have to say. I'm very pleased with it. Uh, it's been a huge amount of work, a huge amount of support, it's a team effort. Uh, we managed to get a copy of the book into about 2,400 schools and every single nursing home in the country, all 456 of them. And the response from that was just remarkable. There were residents sending me cards they'd made in their art classes, you know, thank you letters, uh, phone calls, emails. Uh, it was just literally a, a deluge. So it was uh, a huge success. And, and thanks to everyone who, who took part in it and gave me such support. Yeah, and I'd like to say for Simon and Simon Community, and I'd like to remind our viewers again what the book is about. Vincent is uh, a traveler, and he's traveled all over the world and seen, he's been from one end of the world to the other end of the world, and he's taken fantastic photographs of his journeys, and that is what he's put his 60 best photographs, or 60 most interesting photographs, into the book, 60 Photographs for Simon, and that is the book we're talking about. Vincent, may I say, it's great to see it going into nursing homes, because it'll be there, and it'll be an ageless piece of art. Absolutely, yeah, and uh, the stories from some of the, the homes on it was, have uh, been absolutely heartwarming. Um, you know, a lot of people have traveled in their lives, and of course, the book, they, they're revisiting many places. They've been to their armchair traveling to the Arctic or the Antarctic, so it's here forever. So it's probably when I end up in a nursing home, I hope a copy is there that can flick through it myself in due mm -hmm. course. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been fantastically positive. Is it a general release? If somebody wants to see the book now or to buy the book now, can they go into a bookshop and buy it? Well, it's not on sale in, in, in bookshops, but you, you can buy it online from Merlion Press. Okay, so Merlion Press, and uh, they're selling copies. It's 20 euro a copy. And uh, I think that the fiber then it's to be posted to you, and everything goes directly into the Simon community. So it's still available. So, you know, if people want to buy it, it's a fantastic, you know, present for someone or maybe for themselves or whatever. And as I say, every penny helps the homeless. Perfect. Great. Now, we're going to talk about your most recent, <coughs> recent uh, project. And um, you have now, through your Vincent Butler Heritage, uh, dot com site you have got a series of videos and this are educational videos done through schools done for schools i should say yeah i, I came up with the idea a couple of months ago on you of putting together a series of short videos educational videos for the level at five to twelve year olds and the reason i did that was as a gesture to them really to, as a mark of respect for the incredible job that they've done in, in this battle against COVID, being at home for weeks or months on end. Uh, so the idea is that primary school teachers can tap straight onto my website, vincentbutterheritage.ie, uh, and you go onto the For Schools page, uh, and essentially then scroll down, click on the links, uh, 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 Vimeo uh, video uh, platform, uh, and you just click on the um, videos, you can see three of them there, Splash from the Past, which is about fossils, just bobbing along, stuff gets washed in, like sea bean from the uh, West Indies, uh, Dipper Crust, all about crustaceans and crabs and sea urchins. So they can tap into those, uh, they're 15 to 24 minutes long, uh, and they can use the dentist as a teaching resource. And it's also fantastic. 
as a resource for parents, because don't get on your people staying now for staycation here in Ireland. Um, it's a chance for parents to sit down with their kids, you know, look at the videos, uh, and then when they go down to the seashore, they, they can go and look for this material and select stuff, and it, it makes it fun, it makes it positive, it, it's educational. Um, so, it, and as I say, it's a free resource, they can just tap in. So each thing, as you walk along the, sh the seashore, everything you find has got a little history and a story to it. Oh, absolutely. I mean, every single item. I've, I'm an avid collector on you, as you know from talking last year with you. Um, I have tens of thousands of items in my collection, from fossils to rocks, minerals, shells, bones of animals. I'm an osteoarchaeologist, so I studied ancient bones as a career earlier on. So I have a huge uh, collection, literally in my house, like a museum. So every single item is a story. So. Uh, that's the fascination of the of the seashore and video nine, which is called um, "Puffing About." Uh, it's all about essentially um, uh, making your own collection of uh, these items. And we're going to see some of your collection now. So talk through this, Vincent. Okay, so this first image here is of myself with um, five large whale bones, which I came across on the beach down in Ackle in Mayo a couple of years ago. Now, uh, these particular bones, believe it or not, are from the tail end of the animal. Wow. In other words, it's wow. down towards the back. So you can imagine, if that's the tail, you can imagine what the, the head on this thing would have looked like. My guess is that this is probably a sperm whale, uh, or the remnants of a sperm whale, certainly a very, very large whale. Uh, maybe even a blue whale, because believe it or not, there are 24 different species of whale visit Irish waters offshore, uh, in, 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 including killer whales, sperm whales, you know, and so on. So um, you, you never know quite what you're going to find. So we have got killer whales. I think you've got a photograph of a killer whale as well. We have a photograph uh, of a killer whale, which which will uh, come up. Um, and uh, there's a few more uh, images, so if we can pop up another image there, uh, I'll explain about it. Now, this here on, you believe it or not, is a fossil. A fossil is remains of a prehistoric plant or animal preserved in rock. And this one actually is of ancient sea life. This is an ancient cockle. Uh, just very similar to a species it have today, but this particular one, believe it or not, lived in a tropical sea uh, where Ireland is now. Uh, essentially 340 million years ago. So uh, it, 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 it's in limestone. Limestone is the most common rock we have in the country. So if my effort, if you crack them open, you'll very often come across these carefully preserved uh, mollusks or shellfish uh, from the very ancient past. Yeah, this, this was a friend of mine who worked on, on an expedition cruise ship, as you know, lecturing. Uh, that's how I travel the world. And uh, a friend of mine is an undersea specialist, David Cotton. He lives uh, in, in America. and But uh, he took this shot, he dives. And this is a common or edible orchid. And these are remarkable creatures. Um, they belong to a family called e echinoderms. And that's a fancy word being spiny skin. And if you look closely, you'll see hundreds of little spines there that he uses for protection. Uh, it's got a hard shell uh, with the spines on it. And you'll also see there, there are uh, hundreds of little uh, tube feet. Uh, and that's how the animal actually moves around with these suction pads on the end of them. Uh, it, it grazes. It's an omnivore, so it eats my new plants and animals on the rock. So it grazes along that five feet underneath, uh, and that's how it actually feeds, but they're, they're amazing, you, you'll, you'll sometimes find their shells washed up, they're very brittle, so, you know, it can break up, but you'll see them in souvenir shops, they're very, very popular. Wow, now this is the killer whale. <laughs> this now, Bonnie, yeah, this is the killer whale, now, I've, I've seen killer whales um, on occasion in Galway Bay, believe it or not, on the Burren side, so if you're North Clare looking out into Galway Bay. Uh, I've seen these on occasion, and uh, the, the hunt in the back, they, uh, this is a male. Now, I took this shot actually off Iceland, but it's exactly the same species as you get here in ice waters. And that carpal fin, which you can see on its back on you, is six foot high. 
just to give you kind of a scale on these things. These are quite large animals. Uh, in effect, it's a very large dolphin. Uh, and you can see the, the very distinctive patterning, the, the black patch, uh, the white patches and then the black. And you can see it's a hole there to the left. They're mammals, so you can take a deep breath. They dive down, of course, when they go in, and they have to, you know, uh, get fresh air into their lungs. So they have to surf. So you, you will see them if you look out. And only two weeks ago, I was down in Ackle, and I came across a lower jaw from a killer whale lying on the beach. So you never know what you're going to find. I want to ask you a silly question, like, how dangerous is a killer whale, like, to humans? Uh, to humans, they're not that, um, they're not that dangerous. Now, having said that, um, if you were near one and you were dressed in a diving, you know, a rubber suit, they might mistake you uh, for a seal, which is one of their prey animals, and they might attack. But there's there's very few uh, authenticated um, cases of killer whales in the wild, uh, you know, attacking. So you'd be fairly safe. Now, if you're a seal, <laughs> you better get out of the water because these things will actually come up maybe three or four foot onto the beach and nab you and pull you back in. Okay. Now we have the little puffins. Now you were telling me that there are hundreds of species of puffins. Is that right? No, there's, well, there's a couple of, I mean, there's, there's a number of species, all right. There might be maybe a dozen or 15 species worldwide. But this is the Atlantic puffin. Uh, and they come in to breed uh, on land uh, around, uh, particularly on the west coast of Ireland. They live most of their life on the, actually out on the Atlantic. Uh, and they only come ashore then in, you know, uh, April, May, June, July to breed. They have one egg. This is a couple here. And what you're looking at there is this was a picture taken down off the cliffs of Moher uh, on the West Coast. Uh, they're what we call billing, B-I-L-L-I-N-G, where they, this is how they recognize each other. It's almost like a puppet snout, like a kiss. And uh, yeah. that's how the couple re recognize each other. They lay a single egg on the ground. And when that's hatched out, interestingly, uh, it fed and mined for 40 days, and after that, the parents close off and leave the young puffling, as it's called, on its own. So there's none of this hanging around to go to school and college and marriage and all that before you leave home. These things are gone, and the puffling is left, and very soon realizes I need to get down onto that water down there and start feeding myself because uh, they ain't coming back. So it's none of this any one day. They're straight <laughs> I have to say that is an absolutely brilliant photograph, Vincent. Uh, so, um, puffins, okay, so h how long does a puffin live, for example? How, what's their uh, uh, lifespan? A, pu a puffin lives for maybe up to 10 years. So, uh, uh, yeah, they live for about 10 years. They're only about 25 centimeters high. Very, very comical. You're, you're, it's a tap water canal. They're in their, their best breathing attire. This is breathing. The bill is very, very colourful. Uh, but during the winter, that shed, like your fingernail, it's made of keratin, like your nail, that shed, and it's it's dull, kind of grey. Uh, and then, it, then, in preparation for the next breeding season, once they look at nest to attract a female, uh, and vice versa, uh, it sheds the it, it, it sheds the grey one, and uh, a new colourful one then is formed. Uh, it, it's nicknamed, by the way, is sea parrot because of the colourful beak. Yeah. I must say, Vincent, that your knowledge and and um, your knowledge and the stuff that you were telling us about um, is so, so, so interesting. How do children find it? Are children fascinated by this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time, as I was saying to you, I, I made a career of sharing knowledge. I love sharing uh, information. And uh, I go into schools. So I actually do what I call a great class. Uh, where I've got a, an old crate full of maybe fossils or dinosaur bones or artifacts or, you know, whatever. Uh, and it's just remarkable, the energy and the enthusiasm when you pull out something and show them a fossil or whatever the case may be. So the reaction from a lot of teachers uh, who have been using the video before the school broke for uh, the summer was so, it was just terrific. So I'm hoping that, you know, parents will get onto that, this is about the heritage.ie, go onto the FAR schools page, uh, and, you know, use those videos because it's, it's a huge amount of information. It took me three months, by the way, to put this together. You know, it's a huge and amount of time. I would say as well, the videos are like 15 to 24 minutes long. Yeah, so it's so a nice, you know, little sound bites, really. And they can dip in and dip out of them uh, as they please. There are literally a couple of, certainly 
maybe 120, 150 items, you know, displayed and talked about, everything from jellyfish to asking sharks to sea urchins to fossils to fish, you know, everything. So, uh, and it's great then to can go and explore. Yeah, that's great, Vincent. Now, um, that's your, your, your present project, as you would say, the series of videos. Okay, so I have no doubt you're working on something else now in the future. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm thinking of uh, putting together uh, smaller videos of maybe five minutes uh, using my collection uh, as a sort of source of it, taking maybe 50 or 100 items uh, and doing a, a kind of uh, Vincent's Cabinet of Curiosities. Uh, so that's kind of my next project. So we'll see uh, how that goes. Well, that's absolutely brilliant, Vincent. So once again, I would like, if we could throw up on the screen the series of videos, if we can throw up the names of the series of videos, and there you go, folks. And as I say, and as Vincent says, months of hard work went into these videos. These videos are 15 to 24 minutes long, and uh, you can see them there. Great stuff, Vincent. So, can I just ask you before we go, thank you once again for talking to us from, uh, from uh, Newbridge in County Kildare. So, during lockdown, what did you do? Did you go down around walking the beaches? What did you do during lockdown? Well, during lockdown, um, during lockdown, I spent a lot of time. I've had a lot of time in my hands, so I worked in the tourist ministry, which of course is decimated at the moment. So I went through uh, my collections, uh, as I say, tens of thousands of items. That has taken me like a year. Uh, and I've opened up crates on you of specimens I looked away 15, 20 years ago. So it was just a wondrous reconnection with, with all of this material. Uh, so, you know, and that's why I put this series together, really, is to kind of share, you know, the items I have and get, you know, an appreciation for this wonderful planet and, and you know, that we live on and this great opportunity we have for exploring and enjoying all of this. The wonder of it all is just remarkable. So, so I'm also writing a book on heritage, uh, which will hopefully be published, uh, you know, when we get published back. So uh, that's the next sort of major problem. So I'm working away on that. It's a sort of overview of Irish heritage. Uh, so uh, hopefully that'll go well. And yeah, there we go. Great stuff, Vincent. And I'd like to say as well that um, lockdown or no lockdown, that is something you can log on and watch at any time. So the best place, Vincent, to see some, most of your work, would that be vincentbutlerheritage.ie.com? Yeah, absolutely, on yeah. Vincent Buller Heritage .ie. You'll see there all of the organised tours and heritage programmes and uh, guide training programmes and you know heritage lectures and archaeology lectures and trips and all of that sort of stuff. So it's all there, and uh, we're, it's, 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 again, it's it's like the videos. It's a work in progress. We're we're improving it all the time. So. Uh, yeah, a friend of mine, uh, who Eamon Sinnott from Eamon Sinnott Designs, he's very kindly uh, offered to put a, a website together free of charge for me. He was he designed the book sixty photographs for Simon. So Eamon Sinnott, uh, he's based in Ace, so uh, he's he's brilliant at the uh, designing website. So he's a great help. Yeah, great stuff, Vincent. Well, most interesting and, uh, of course, very educational for children and uh, fantastic work in getting your book, 60 Photographs for Simon into the nursing homes. Absolutely great stuff. Very interesting again. And uh, thank you for speaking to us again on Calvin TV, Vincent. And I have no doubt that we will hear from you again. Absolutely. Listen, Anya, thank you so, so much for talking to me. Mind yourself well. And uh, thanks, Brian. I'm sure we will talk to you again. Well, there you have it, folks, uh, the fantastic Vincent Butler, all the way from uh, Newbridge and in Ca County Kildare. And as you know, folks, Calvin TV goes worldwide, all over the world. So we like to spread and to share our interesting conversations with folks. So that's it for now this evening. Uh, thank you for watching Calvin TV. Thank you to Cyril for the use of the broadband. And thank you to Castle, thank you to Drummer Lee for the use of the, and Positive Age for the use of the studio here in uh, Drummer Lee. Thank you and good evening from Cabin TV.